So a lot of what's been happening, happening over this past year is to develop some curriculum prototypes around small labs or sort of to get a sense of what that learning is going to look like. What we've tried to do with small lab is to design it in a way that it's open on all sides. Um, what we hope that does is really establish this relationship where uh, students and teachers outside of small lab can really move into and out of small lab in a really fluid kind of way. One of the things about small lab um, that, that is uh, really beneficial is that it's, it's an open and porous space that, that allows um, um, collaboration and it, it supports a, a social cognition. And, and um, so many, many people are able to, to collect within the space and, um, and perform different types of uh, social activities. It forces you to see uh, that everybody in the same space is looking at the same thing and experiencing the same thing, but they're all pulling different things from it, and they have to articulate why those differences happen. Small Lab really changes the dynamics of the, of the classroom in the sense that, you know, just physically you look at the images of students working, a class of 20, 25 students will be arranged around the space. A teacher is, is uh, you know, sort of maybe in the center of that space, but often not. They're on the periphery. It just it changes sort of the structure of it. It's also questions of, of who has the power during, during a particular kind of a, a scenario because actually the, the interfaces to interact are really distributed. A couple students may be holding physical objects. A teacher may have part of that or may not have part of that. So it really reshapes things just in terms of, again, the physical layout that I was describing before. So what we did in this case of the, the Earth Science module is that, that a group of students essentially reenact the process of geological evolution. So they construct this, uh, what's known as a layer cake structure. So one student will choose a depositional environment, so maybe it's a, a shallow ocean that they, that they put into this space. And then another student will grab a sediment layer and put that into this structure, so they'll drop it into that. And so based on that, another student will, will look at that depositional environment, that sediment, and choose an appropriate index fossil that may have been found in that. So over time, what they're doing in this, in this simulation is building up this, this geological structure. So we're looking at a couple different pieces of this. Uh, one of them is this question of embodiment and the role that that plays. So by that, we mean physically moving within the space. We wanted to understand, particularly in the context of some of the work we're doing in physics, we wanted to understand or see that students were able to, to advance in their understanding of real-world physical phenomena and the kinds of abstract representations like graphs and diagrams and equations that they might see. Um, and that was really what, we, what we've been viewing as an opportunity to think, uh, think through, again, physical action. Uh, so in this case, we designed a series of games where students would, would physically walk within the space, so thinking about things like constant velocity constant acceleration. They would be asked to, to walk, in, walk in constant velocity and as they did so we would see that their, um, a diagram would be created about their position over time. A graph would be created at the same time. Um, an algebraic representation would be, would be generated as well. What we found in that case is that there was a really nice correspondence in terms of, of student understanding of, you know, now a graph is not, not sort of again this static uh, representation, but it's really derived d in a very direct way in real time from their physical movement. Small Lab, because it's so interactive and because it's um, such an immersive space that requires so many people participating, um, it's actually an ideal composing space and it's an ideal space to uh, really practice what that's like to, to use our sort of composition and invention process to think through how we feel about worlds. How do you make a place that 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 supports um, dif different a different types of um, social collaborations and, and cultural practices? So in the case of stickball, it what what we did is um, um, we we made we made a game. We abstracted a game, but we also made a place, and 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 what we created was a ball court, and and and, and a ball court is is a is a special place. It's a place where people come together. To, to, in, to interact with each other, to come to understand, or to come to negotiate with one another.
when students were active in small lab that, there, that the amount of student-to-student -student exchanges and the amount of kind of student-led discussions really, really ramped up. And when students were in their regular instruction, it was just a, a much different story in terms of the vast, vast majority of the interaction was, you know, teacher asking questions, students responding directly back to the teacher. So in that way, we, we found good evidence that, that the kind of framing of collaboration simply by the introduction of this, this kind of altered environment was really, was really altered in a way that was positive. We're working with the teachers to, to think about other ways of, of framing the learning environment. And I think that's ultimately where we hope to have an impact in, in advancing a, a student-centered kind of an approach. Uh, and we can demonstrate that through the outcomes that I described, we hope.